Today we're going to talk about story editing and how to set up a structured editing system to help you move from the first draft of your novel to the final draft. Now there are two main things I want to look at today. On the one hand, I want to look at the chapter view. Having a self-editing checklist at this level will help you stay organized as you write on a daily basis. Now notice, for example, here, if I'm on my first draft, I can just click on this tab here and then tick off any of these first draft items here labeled D1. This stands for draft one. And after we're done looking at the chapter level like we're doing now, I want to look at self-editing from the plot level or the, at the story level. So if I jump over to plot visualization here, you'll notice that I can click on this uh, draft tab up here, and then I can give each chapter or scene a specific color based on how much editing work I've done on that specific section of the novel. And remember, if you want to follow along and use the tools that I'm using here today, a link to Scribble can be found in the description below. So let's jump in. Now at Scribble, we use a six draft template that takes authors through a linear self-editing process. Now to get a top level overview of what any of these draft steps are, simply click on any book that you've created within Scribble and then click on plot visualization. Then click on this draft view tab up here. Now notice if I roll on any of these six small circles down here, details of the draft requirements for that specific step will show up here. So the six steps that we focus on are the first draft, which is a story structure pass. The second draft, which is a story draft and character action draft. The third draft is a character draft. The fourth draft is a world building draft. The fifth draft is a technical edit, and the sixth draft is a friend or editor read and edit. Now, the reason I use the word linear above is because the novel editing process requires a logic to help you protect yourself from going in circles, getting lost, and doing unnecessary work. For example, you don't want to waste time editing the spelling or grammar of a chapter only to find out later that you need to scrap that entire chapter altogether because it doesn't fit into your plot or it's just a generally weak chapter. Now, in this example, it would have been smarter to double check the strength of your overall story structure before starting work on the more granular technical editing requirements of this individual chapter. So generally, we're going to want to move from left to right here, making our way from the more general to the more specific, and prioritizing important narrative elements like plot and character before we add the flourishes and accents to our world. For example, it doesn't matter how breathtaking your backdrop is if your characters are weak. If this was the case, you'd lose your readers. This is why we focus on character before world building, just as we focus on story structure before we focus on spelling and grammar. Now, of course, there will be some overlap and back and forth, but this will provide you with a rough outline so that by the time you get to the sixth draft of your novel, you should have something readable on your hands. So let's jump in and talk about the drafting process in more detail, uh, especially as it relates to the pre-writing process as well as the first draft. Now, I like to look at the first draft the way that a sculptor would look at a beautiful piece of stone. Now, within that stone, there is an enormous amount of creative possibility in terms of what you can do with it and how you can shape it and give that stone life. Your first draft is really just about you putting those initial marks in the stone. You get your chisel out and you start blocking things out in rough shapes. Getting your first draft right can be a massive time saver later on. You don't want to start out with a story shape in your mind, only to find out halfway through that that's not what you want at all, and in fact, then spin off into an entirely different direction. Now, of course, the writing process, like the sculpting process, gives you a lot of room to move, and there is no need to work yourself into a creative corner. But giving yourself some rough guidelines early on will actually feel quite liberating and freeing. Each day, you don't want to be asking yourself questions like, am I writing a sci-fi or is this a romance novel? Where am I going with this? What should I do next? And you want to have some rough ideas about these things sketched out during your first draft. Now, over on our channel, we have another video, which I'll link to below, which provides a walkthrough of a very helpful tool we have built into Scribble called the Key Steps Worksheet. Now, this worksheet was designed to help you create the shape of your first draft by asking you a lot of really important questions about your story that will help you build a strong narrative and compelling characters for your first draft. This is because a strong first draft relies on solid pre-writing work. This worksheet, uh, which can be found by clicking on any book in your library here, and then clicking on Storybase, and then this Key Steps Worksheet tab, was designed to be a sort of controlled brainstorming exercise designed to help you craft a strong main plot line, a strong subplot line, a well-thought-out protagonist, as well as an antagonistic force. 
Now, these are really the centerpiece elements in any good fiction. And as a dramatist, you need to know how to look at these narrative elements as designable parts of your story. For example, in most good stories, the main character will undergo some type of change. They will generally be a different person by the end of the story than they were at the beginning of the story. They could go up or they can go down. And it's true in some cases that um, some characters do have a flat character arc and they stay the same. But having this knowledge of where you're bringing your protagonist early on will help you shape the strongest story possible around that arc. So imagine that I know that I'm writing a tragedy and I'm trying to bring my character down and I'm working with a negative change arc. So if I know this is the journey that I want my readers to go on with me, then I can design my scenes in a dramatic way that optimally plays on the dramatic tension inherent in good tragedy. Now with this knowledge early on, I could look at my story and its component parts just as a sculptor might mark off roughly where the head will go, where the arms might go, and so on. You could potentially start doing the same here with your story acts. Now let's jump over again to our plot visualization page. So you might say something like at a story level, I'm going to bring my character from here to here, a place essentially much lower. But let's map this out on an act by act basis. Perhaps in the first act, you'll give a sense of false hope. Perhaps you'll even do the same in act 2a. In Act 2b, you might make the outcome uncertain, and by the time you get to your third act, you could take your character down as far as you want to take them. Or perhaps every act is simply falling deeper into the hole. Perhaps instead you provide a false sense of hope at a scene level or a chapter level. Either way, these are ideas that deal with the shape and the tone of your story that you can start to think about early on. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's helpful to have a general sense of direction early on just to give you some guidance. So this. Um, worksheet is really a helpful pre-writing brainstorming exercise designed to help push you towards as strong of a first draft as you can possibly build. Uh, it frames questions in a way that reminds you not only to build in these narrative elements like a character weakness or a moral dilemma, uh, also things like reveals or reversals, but it also guides you through a creative process so that you can be sure each element is as well thought out and as strong as it can possibly be. Not only that, but it helps you shape your idea so that these elements strongly relate to each other or beautifully and creatively weave in and out of one another. So with this pre-writing work done and this worksheet completed, you'd be able to start mapping out your story. So in Scribble here, I could simply add my chapters or scenes uh, to the corresponding act with a summary attached to it. And then over on my plot visualization page, I could see my entire story mapped out here. Now, perhaps during my first draft sketch, I didn't get all of my scenes or my chapters, and that's fine. It's very unlikely that you'll have it perfectly figured out early on. Perhaps you only have your main centerpiece scenes, and that's fine too. From there, you can start filling in the gaps. Now that you've gone through this process and you know what story you're trying to tell and why you want to tell it and who the characters are going to be that your audience will go on this journey with, it's time to actually start writing. Now within Scribble over on your main writing pad page, you'll notice on the checklist page, uh, which can be accessed by clicking on this tab here, you'll see these checklist items. Now to the left of each item, you'll see D1, D2, D3, etc. This stands for draft one, draft two, uh, draft three, and so on. So if you're on your first draft, just focus on the checklist items labeled D1. If you're uncertain what any checklist item is, you can just simply click on this text here for a detailed explanation of what you're supposed to be doing to satisfy that checklist item. Here for these D1 items, you're really going to be focused on story structure, establishing those main story arcs and creating a logical sequence of actions and reactions. Each scene will likely exist because of something that happened in the previous scene. So getting all of that narrative architecture, or at least an idea of it right early on is important because this is the skeleton that everything is going to hang on. Now, as we're working, it's common to focus on one chapter more than the others. Now, some of your first draft chapters might be in great condition. Others might still need a lot of love. So in order to keep track of where you are with all of this, you can go over to your plot visualization page over in the left sidebar and then click on this draft view tab here. Now, the draft view tab is helpful because its color coding is specific to the drafting process. So any changes you make here to the color of this card won't impact the color of the other scene cards on this plot view page. Again, we have an entire video on how to get the most out of using these plot cards. Uh, and again, I'll link to that video below. But for now, let's stay on this draft view. 
Now, essentially, what this allows us to do is visually keep track of where we are in the drafting process. So for example, imagine we've completed our checklist items on chapter one, three, and five. What we can do then is we can mark them as complete here by clicking on these small circles. Now notice the color changes. Now, what many writers do is they complete their second uh, draft next. However, every writer is different and you might just be in the zone and you might complete all the checklist items for um, a chapter up to draft four, five, or six, for example. And that's no problem at all. You can keep track of all that progress here. So for example, I could make this chapter as being completed up to draft three, uh, this one up to draft four, this one up to draft five, this one all the way up to draft six. This will give me an at-a-glance reference of what I've completed um, and what still within my story needs a lot of attention. Also, as I've mentioned before, if you roll over any of these circles below, it will give you a top-level reminder of what you're trying to complete for each draft. Here, for example, you'll learn about what's expected from you for your first draft, your second draft, your third draft, and so on. So before you check them off, just make sure that you've read all of those action items down here. So hopefully this gives you a good understanding of what you need to do to stay organized as you make your way through this six-step self-editing process. Again, remember, if you're ever lost on any item, uh, simply click on the checklist item text here in the sidebar to read about what that specific action item uh, is requiring from you. And again, if you're not already using Scribble, uh, you can use all of these uh, self-editing tools by signing up to Scribble by following the link in the description below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe as we publish new videos with helpful tips for writers regularly. Thanks for stopping by today.